Hello friends, welcome. I'm in the Sylvester Cemetery in Atlanta, Georgia today to find the gravesite of a very important person in country music. Right up this gravel pathway called the Fiddlin' John Carson Lane is the final resting spot of the very first country music recording artist. The Sylvester family plot is right at the end of this path where John is laid to rest. John was born in 1868 and became the very first country music artist to cut a record. The story goes that a guy named Pierre showed up in Atlanta where John had been playing fiddle and winning contests and, and playing out in the public a lot. Mr. Pierre made a record, made 500 copies of this record. All 500 copies of that record sold out very fast. And Mr. Pierre knew that there was something special about this country music, hillbilly music, they called it. Then he went on to discover some other people of that genre, the Carter family, uh, some other, some other uh, musicians of note. But old fiddling John Carson, he was the very first. starting to rain here in Atlanta. A lot of these graves are pretty old. The one that we just saw with the anchor and the cross on it, that guy died in 1845. That's a long time ago. This is not an easy one to find. There are a lot of graves in this, in this graveyard. There's so many graves in this graveyard. You know, I learned something about this place. Do you know how many dead people there are in this cemetery? I'll give you a second. All of them. It's the best dad joke I got. I'm not a dad though. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like these graveyards. They're very peaceful places and gives you a chance to reflect on life and death and what you're doing, if it's worthy of doing, you know, because you only, you only get to do this once some say twice or more, but right now, all we know is you get to do this once. So it is good to come to a place like this and reflect. I think I see the grave in the background. What a cool headstone. 1873 to 1898. The cemetery is really nice. Each of these family plots are broken up by these block barricades. A lot of them are stone barricades. It's taken about 30 minutes of walking around, but I finally found the grave. appears that John, his wife, and their very young son, Horace, were all laid to rest here. There's a couple other graves in the back. Assumably their children, Mamie, John, and the blank stone here, were also laid to rest. The same family plot. This little statue of a dog sits right at the base of the Gravestone. Thanks for your art, John. Very cool man. Right after I leave this cemetery today, I'm going to be headed up north, making my way into Tennessee. I may stop and see a couple friends along the way, but my destination this week is near Nashville, Smithville, in fact. Our family's gonna take a couple trips into Nashville, I'm sure, and check out what we all know is the country music city. Well, at least that's what I think of. When I heard that the first recording artist in country was from Atlanta, I was pretty surprised, and I had to come see this. 
I'm surprised that he wasn't from Nashville or, or something like, or like West Virginia or Kentucky or something. But nope, right here in Atlanta. What a cool find. If you're looking for John's grave, right here at the entrance, you walk about 50 feet, 30 feet, and it's right there, that white barricade, or that white wall around their family plot. So long, John. Thanks for all your awesome contribution to the music world. Well, thanks for joining me today, friends. I really appreciate it. Hope you stay tuned for the rest of these adventures from Tennessee and southern part of the United States over the next couple of weeks. I'll see you in the next video.